tilted down. Uh, hey guys, thanks for coming out to our cafeteria for our PG talk. Uh, in case you guys don't know, this is a talk I'm giving at the narrative workshop on GDC on Monday, um, March 14th. So during this talk, I'm really open at the end of it to any feedback you have. I can't obviously blow up the whole talk, but if you have slides that didn't quite work for you, moments that I went too slow or too fast, I spent too much time on something, you didn't understand something, please catch me tomorrow, Friday, next week, uh, and I can adjust the key for the presentation on So thank you all for coming. Uh, here we talk about this stuff. So my talk is on all choice, no consequence, how to officially branch your game's narrative. Uh, branching narratives and interactive stories are becoming really, really big right now. We're seeing it in a lot of AAA titles, we're seeing it in a lot of mobile games, even little casual studios are integrating more story and more character agency and more choices into everything they're doing. Uh, a lot of people approach this and they think, okay, player agency is really important, I want a really robust world, I want every experience to feel customized, to feel special, and so they buckle down and they spend their time creating thousands of pages of content and creating experiences that every single time that I can play, I have an experience that feels highly customized to me, that feels really, really special, really unique, and really, really beautiful. And honestly, I don't think Honestly, that's wrong. It is the wrong approach. Um, if you're doing something artistically in your free time, and you want to explore the creation of a world and a narrative, it's great. And you should do that, it's really fun. But if you're trying to make a game or an experience that you want to make money on, that you want to actually get out into the market before 10 years have passed, it's really important that you think about how to do this efficiently. There are four facets to creating your branching story. There are the choices within it, there's the dialogue that you're using, there's the story that you're telling, and there are the major branches that happen throughout it. Story is the most important part of this process. It's also not what my talk is about. But, to summarize it, before you go into any branching, any narrative, or any player agency whatsoever, you must have an excellent story. This story is something that should be impactful, it should be meaningful, it should have a very clear theme, it should have clear conflicts, lovable characters, hateable characters. You should not be distracting yourself with choices while you are creating this story. Choices will bog you down, they will muddy your message, and they will essentially ruin this, the backbone of the story that is key to this experience. They also will honestly slow down your process. You start exploring all these different branches of choices before you even know where you're ending up. So make sure you take the time to create a really strong outline. A good outline is something that has every key beat, key conflict uh, bulleted out. It has good rising and falling action. Each conflict is more severe and has more risk than the conflict before it and has a really satisfying resolution in the end. Share that outline around, develop it, make sure that everyone who reads it absolutely loves what they are reading and thinks it is a strong story. You should make sure when you have that outline that there is enough looseness between each beat that you can make some edits. But it's tight enough that you're probably not going to blow that whole along the way. Once you have that outline that you're pretty comfortable with, that is when you should move to branches. A moment here to clarify the difference between a branch and a choice. A choice to me is just the actual set of dialogue, a small bit of wording change or a small, tiny little thing that I make a choice. A branch is something bigger. A branch is something that's changing the scenes for the characters that I'm interacting with in a memorable way. It is usually a unique way to reach each of those key goals that I have on my own. It is something that is strong enough and memorable enough that when my story references it later, the players actually remember it. It is not a completely disconnected set of storylines. Some key things to keep in mind. Some great examples are who you might date and Demi, uh, what gender they are. This actually changes what the dates look like, what scenes you have, how they react to you. Um, in the very first season of The Walking Dead, who you choose to save in the convenience store is a great example of a, of a pretty good branch where the actual scenes that you see will change, but the core story does not. And finally, in Inkley's Sorcery, the different paths that you take to reach different parts of the town are great examples of good branches where I see that my scenes are different, but each landmark I hit along the way stays the same. For a bit of data as to why I'm right in telling you to avoid those major story branches. These are uh, seven of our uh, pretty popular stories and episodes. The very first one here is Tangled Love. What you're seeing here is a graph of what percentage of players replay these stories. 
Tangled Love is our most replayed story in the app. 18% of people who read this story choose to replay it. This story has pretty much no branches until the very last episode, when one choice that you make gives you four different endings. It's an incredibly long story, it's about 70 episodes long, and again, at 18%, it is our most replayed story. The second most replayed story is the demo story at 8.4%. So you see from one to two a pretty steep uh, cutoff. We think that the demos replay a lot again because of the new dates and unique scenes that you can get. But the core beats along the way are identical no matter what your playthrough is. So don't worry about replaying. These next five are all three hours. They're decent stories. You see between six and two and a half percent replay. The one I want to call out is Finding Mr. Wright at 4.8 percent. This is a story that we created that has four completely unique narratives that change based on the choices we're making, with 12 completely different endings. We advertise this very quickly at front. Players know that this story is very, very different and very customized to their experience. And it is also only 15 episodes long, one five. And it has a 4.8% complaint. Making major branches doesn't matter. Making branches that feel impactful does. So how do you find those branches? Number one, a great place is story room disagreements. When you're in the room, you're debating, man, I don't know if you should do this, that. That's a great point to make a decision. Again, don't branch early in your outline. Make a choice, pursue a great story, but make a note that this is a good spot for a branch. A great example is in our Mean Girl story. There's a moment where you can choose to kiss Micah or not kiss Micah. This is actually a point of contention in the room. There was a feeling that if I kissed my gut, I now raise this deep smart relationship. I declare what I felt for him, and it's going to make those next interactions really, really tense. But there's also a feeling that if I didn't kiss him, now the chase is still going on. This game is the story of the game is more interesting. I have more of a goal. So in the end, they went forward with one, and then later created a pretty good branch of both that changes the scenes that happen after it. Another great place to find uh, good branches is to think about the scenes that are in your outline, what information is being presented in them, and see if you can change the order that the player sees them. In other words, allow the player to choose what order they go to these different places. A great example of this is in Telltale's uh, The Wolf Among Us. There's a moment where you can choose to go see Mr. Toad or Prince Charming first, but you will end up with both of them. You get the exact same information no matter what way you see them, but different things happen in each of the scenes that are accepted whether you went first or second. It's a pretty satisfying choice. It made me really feel like I could have affected what happened, but in the end, the same story was told to me. Finally, one of my favorites is when you're looking at those beats in your outline, work backwards from any major conflict or goal. Think about something that you know has to happen. She has to find her sister's body. She has to get married to the guy. And change the smaller beats along the way of how she got there in between the two arcs. This is a pretty simple and pretty quick way to make big branches and really satisfying branches that also don't blow up your story too much because you've made sure you've kept all the beats around them the same. So just for a piece of context, when you're thinking about it, what we've noticed is you should get one three big branches as soon as possible. This teaches players that all of their choices won't matter, even though they won't, uh, and it sets them up that they should be aware of the choices that they're making. We then do another one, we've seen this pretty good to do another one, about every 20 to 30 minutes of gameplay. For us, this means we have one pretty big branch every three to five episodes. Uh, in Telltale, I've noticed it's about one, sometimes two per episode. Uh, just to give you some context. The most important, you do not get hung up on your small choices yet. It's not time for small choices. These are just big changes to the outline that your writer is going to have to handle. Speaking of, oh, from a little piece of data that I just learned, we've also found out that Pater, uh, players are more likely to pay for later branches if they see bigger branches that are packed for earlier. Which again, just kind of supports this idea of get a branch in the really soon. Alright, so you've got your outline, you've got some branches in it, you've got some, you know, good meaty differences without really blowing up your story at all. So now it's time to hand this to one of your writers and take it yourself and write some great dialogue. This is not a talk about dialogue. But take some time with it, make sure you're laughing, make sure you're crying, make sure these characters have unique voices. Not worry about choices, just worry about those big branches. And when you're ready, if you're really happy with this grip, you've got a ton of iterations. Now it's time to look at choices. Choices are really the fun of these interactive narratives. They're usually small things, they're a little less impactful, but they allow me to feel like I am this character and I am affecting this world in small, interesting, and entertaining ways. 
to help you do that. One, you need to identify the strong beats for your choices quickly. You need to make sure those choices feel meaningful when they happen, even though they aren't, because remember choices, not super meaningful. And you need to avoid the bad choices. So let's go where to find your choices. There are three places you can find choices pretty quickly, and again, these are small choices. One is character reactions. A really quick cheat that I use is I go find through the question mark through my script, and pretty much every time there is a question mark in your script, there is a choice. Anytime an NPC is asking your character a question, it's a choice. Usually your character has something they kind of sort of have to say, but you can change how they word it or how they choose to react and allow the player to have a little bit more agency of the character that they're creating. Two are any, any character defining traits that you have. Things like avatar creators, we've seen that clothing and closets are great, especially if you give them a goal for why they need to wear this outfit, why they're putting it on, why it's important to the story. We've actually started testing as well, designing your own boyfriend or your best friend, your own villain in the story. Anything to allow the player to feel like they have agency in this world, but aren't really affecting the story at all. There's also some small ones where they need to say thank you, for example. They could say, oh, thank you so much for your help. Or they could be like, whatever, thanks. Same story, but you're getting a slightly different sense of ownership of that character. And three, one that people don't think about a lot, are those unavoidable consequences. A lot of stories have moments that have to happen. Uh, you have to get hit by a car, you have to get bitten by a dog, you have to skip school one day. And those can feel really, really bad in these new stories, that, uh, these new types of games and interactive stories, where people are losing agency in that moment. Their character has to do something or something has to happen. Choices are a great way to fix this. Um, a good example is in Demi, when we first tested it here, if you guys played it, uh, we had a moment where your sister has to get mad at you because you haven't paid attention to her while you've been on tour. The goal of the scene was to show the player that it's pretty much impossible to balance fame and family and your friends at the same time. But we were getting a lot of feedback and this moment just felt really unsatisfying because you never had an option to do anything with your sister. There never was a choice to help her. So when she suddenly gets mad at you, it's, it's a piece of agency that's worked from you as the player. So we used that moment to add a ton more choices into the game. What we did is in the last six episodes, and the six episodes before it, we had a moment where you could interact with your sister, and it didn't change the story in any big way. It would just be small scenes that you'd see a slightly different scene. For example, we added a meet and greet with Debbie, so you could go hang out with them and have a meet and greet, or you could get your sister a gift in the streets of Chicago. This is a tough choice. It's the only meet and greet in the game where you get to hang out with Debbie, or you get to go get your sister a present. I'd say it's a pretty easy choice. There's another one where you're on a date with this boy you have a crush on, or girl you have a crush on, and another girl walks up and starts flirting with him. At that exact moment, your phone rings, and it's your sister. Well, do you answer your sister's phone call, or do you go stop this drama that's happening? We put three or four choices like this throughout it. Almost inevitably, someone messed up one of them and didn't hang out with their sister, and now your sister could reference that specific choice when she got mad at you on TV. So this made that choice feel like, maybe if I had done one different thing, I could have changed the outcome. There's still, of course, a small percentage of people that did everything with their sister. Eh, something had to happen. So to summarize briefly, how to make choices, how to add choices to your story efficiently. One, you have to have a great story. If you do not have a great story, stop. Back to square one, do not branch it, it will not get better. Second, think about your major branches. Make that have big scene changes, big character changes, and make sure they always also have a way to reunite with the main storyline. Next, write it with a great script, with great characters. Again, if you don't have this, your choices won't fix it. And finally, add all the small, fun little choices that really feel like they make a difference. Always look at your choices and make sure they feel like they matter, with immediate callbacks and very clear consequences set up front. But don't worry about going overboard with those. Just enough to make it fun. And never ever negate a choice that a player has made. Your player must always have agents in this game. That is my GDC talk. Thank you all for listening to me. If you have any questions, if you don't think we have a mic, you can raise your hand and chat.